My lawyer started by asking Mari if she minded us recording the meeting. She was fine with it. As soon as we started recording, my soon-to-be ex-wife began to try and apologize. I bluntly interrupted her and asked her, point blank, how many men she had cheated on me with and when did it start? Welcome back to They Did What? Your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories where I go over them, analyze them, and most certainly make fun of them. Today, I'm going to go over part two of the Scorched Earth story that I started yesterday. As a quick recap, that's all about the guy's been married for a while, has two kids, and one day his wife didn't come home uh, at all. It was snowing outside. He went over to the friend's house to go looking for her because she was going to go out and have some drinks before they went on vacation. Wasn't responding to her texts. Went to the house, went in, and found her in bed with some other dude. Proceeded to beat the crap out of the dude, and they all pulled him off off him and told his wife to pretty much get in the car and on the way home they got into a car accident because it was snowing and all car flipped rolled wife got uh, really injured he just got a few scratches and obviously he knows that she's been cheating on him and it's over and this guy's gone through a lot of a uh, emotional turmoil and all that in the previous video left the hospital and went and told the in-laws what happened she was cheating and basically it's over then went and told his parents about what happened and it's over and now and then he we left off with him talking to some different attorneys finding the right one to get things rolling and like i said in the title scorched earth because he definitely goes scorched earth now we're going to do part two and part two is going to have a lot of crazy revelations that are going to come about from this uh particular story what was going on with the wife etc etc because let me tell you as you're going to see, it wasn't just one dude. And is it really ever? Now, by the way, guys, as you can see by the length of this video, this is a long video. So if you guys like the long stories and you like to listen to this when you're driving home from work or to work or whatever, this is a good one. So it starts off or continues. Not only am I not sure where to begin, I'm not even sure what to do when I do. What to say when I do. I guess the first thing is to tell everyone I did manage to get a very good lawyer. Her firm is general. Her firm in general is rated the highest at representing men in divorce cases in my area. Instead of passing my case off to someone else on the legal team, she took on my case on her own. Everyone at the firm has been kind and supportive. I can tell they just don't care about getting their retainer and payoff. Nadia, my lawyer, has done everything she can to help me with my well-being and sanity. Well, that's great. Great to hear. After agreeing to take my case, we went over the usual forms that I need to fill out. I listed property and all bank account information as well as ballpark estimates of what Mari and I make income-wise. After explaining about the wreck and what I just saw before it happened, uh, she asked if I had an STD panel. I explained I had and everything had come back clean. She then asked if I documented the infidelity with pictures or video. I told her I hadn't been thinking rationally enough at the moment to do that. Well, that's too bad. If you can go back in time and record the whole thing, they make it so much easier. Uh, she phoned a PI her firm uses, and they set up a meeting between he and I the next day. I live in a fault state. Aha! An at-fault state. How wonderful. So while I knew Mari was unfaithful, I need actual evidence for the divorce to go my way. We set up one of her, st her staff to, uh, to be the go-between between me and Mari's dad as far as communication goes and to arrange drop-offs. I got her aide to go ahead and notify my soon-to-be ex-father-in-law that my ex could have the kids the upcoming weekend and following week. Nadia then asked if I had arranged therapy for me and my children. I explained I was due to have my first therapy appointment that week. But as the children had yet to be told anything, I was holding off on that. She told me as soon as I felt that they were in need of any professional attention to let her know she had several therapists she could recommend. She expressed what seemed to be sincere condolences. I was having to go through all this and all I have and will. I tend to dislike lawyers, but I do think I might have found one with an actual soul. She gave me a list of things to collect and do before our next meeting. Many of the instructions were identical to the advice users post here. So when she told me to drop by the drugstore to get two DNA kits, I thought nothing of it. I knew it was standard protocol. Two day DNA kits. I'm sure some of you guys here can uh, see where this is going. This poor bastard. When I got home with the kids that night, I did the cheek swabs for me and them. I sealed everything up and mailed the kids off after taking the kids to school the next morning. Two days later was Friday, and the go-between dropped the kids off with their grandfather for the weekend that morning. 
I went to work and I was just coming back from lunch when I got an email notification from my personal account. I could see it was uh, it was two emails from the lab, so I waited to get my computer to view them. At my desk, I opened the first email and clicked a link. Can you imagine your heart beating, waiting for the results? The results said that my son Michael was in fact my son. Hallelujah. I opened the other email and clicked the link. I read what it said. I read what it said again. I couldn't really say anything. I just started shaking my head. I knew I had to get out of the office before breaking down, but I managed to do screenshots of both results and email them, to, email them to myself as photo files. I went to my car and began bawling as the realization my daughter Carrie was in fact not my daughter set in. This poor guy. So, as I suspected and you suspected, the wife rolling in the hay, that wasn't a one-time incident as like it ever is. This poor guy finds out his daughter is not his. I can't imagine having an arm cut off would hurt much more than losing a daughter. It honestly felt like my soul had been taken from me. I don't know any more way to describe it. I didn't know who to call. I just sat there crying and wishing like hell I could wake up from my nightmare. I downloaded the two files from my email account and texted the pictures to my lawyer. Within 20 seconds, Nadia called and asked where, uh, where I was. Work was all I could manage to say. She told me to stay there and someone from the firm would be there in a few minutes. I ended the call and opened the door. I began to vomit uncontrollably until I was dry heaving. By the time I managed to stop puking and feeling dizzy, one of the paralegals arrived to pick me up. She took me to the firm to see as soon as Nadi had finished with a client, they ushered me into her office. The first thing she told me was that sometimes the tests come back wrong. She said she understood I was upset and had every right to be. But she urged me that we need to test Carrie and me again in a local lab to ensure nothing gets contaminated. I couldn't believe what was happening. Even after catching Mari cheating, I just assumed the DNA test on my kids was a formality. I would have never thought my wife would, be, uh, ever, would ever be unfaithful. But imagining she was capable of having some other man's baby, if true, who the hell did I marry? I couldn't even confront Mari if I wanted to. I didn't have concrete, concrete proof. Yet I couldn't imagine if the results confirmed what we highly suspected. How she and I would ever have that conversation. Oh, I can imagine the conversation. There'd be a lot of the F word involved and other things like that. Uh, one of the ladies in the office at the firm had a blood pressure cup and checked mine to make sure I wasn't at any dangerous levels. It was elevated and I did feel like I was close to a panic attack. Yet I was numb and in shock and at the same time. I wonder what was next. I struggled to grasp my little girl might have been not, been not been my little girl. At that moment, I was so glad the kids were staying with their mom. I started wondering if both tests were, could be wrong, and Carrie was my daughter and Michael wasn't my son. I knew I couldn't wait two more days to know the truth. So the go-between set up a time where she could pick up Carrie up the next day for a few hours and take me back to Mari's parents. We did the test in a sterile environment and trained by medical staff. There was no mix-up. I am not Carrie's father. It took me a day to get to the results, and she, she was back with her mom by the time I got them. But I cried even harder the second time. I'm so glad Carrie wasn't there to witness it. This poor guy. But don't worry, guys. This guy, You're going to see why this guy goes scorched earth. And is most certainly warranted. Because this woman he married is the freaking devil. I'm surprised she doesn't have horns bulging out of her head like Darth Maul. I sent the lawyer. I sent the results to my lawyer, and she called to check on me. She urged me to seek out, seek out family and not go through things alone. I got in my car and drove to my dad's, crying the whole way. When I got there and saw my mom, she knew something was wrong, but I couldn't. But she couldn't get it out of me. Finally, I just managed to utter, "Carrie is not my daughter." Mom asked me what, but she knew she'd heard correctly, and I was incapable of repeating it. After about 30 seconds of silence, other than me weeping uncontrollably, she stood and got her cell phone. She called my dad. She told him to hurry home, but please be very careful that I have bad news. I could tell my dad wanted at least a hint of what could be so bad. She just urged him to be safe and get home as soon as he could. He arrived in about 20 minutes, and we just had a long cry for hours. I'd console my dad. He'd console my mom. they consoled console me, but we were all inconsolable. Huh. <sighs> Can't make this stuff up, huh? They, of course, asked me about Michael, and I assured them he was mine. They both expressed relief and, that, and then felt badly about being relieved to only be losing one grandchild. They asked me what I was going to do. I told them I didn't know. The only thing I was for certain for me at the moment was that Carrie would never want 
one for anything she needed and most things she wanted. I didn't even care about potential required child support at the moment she was going to be taken care of. As horrible as I was feeling for myself, I felt even worse for Carrie, being totally innocent. Yeah, it's not this girl's fault that mom is a W-H-O-R-E. She shouldn't suffer. Uh, did I want custody of her? Could I get custody of Carrie even if I wanted it? I began to wonder if Mari knew or suspected. I suddenly wanted some damn answers. I met with Dottie after work on Monday, and she told me she met with a private detective hired to follow Mari. Due to the wreck, she had been out of the house to she hadn't, she hadn't been out of the house to cheat anymore. So I wasn't surprised he didn't have any recent evidence. But one of the things Nadi had had me bring was Mari's old cell phone from out of the drawer at home. He was able to get in and access nearly every app as if he was if, as if he were on her destroyed phone. He found nudes sent and received it to and from various guys. Guys, plural, multiple guys. Tons of messages and sexting with enough admission of guilt in them to sway any judge. I was asked if I wanted to see any of the pictures or read the text. I declined. But Nadia and I did need to plan how I was going to confront Mari about Carrie. She thought it best to do it in her office, if Mari could be talked into it. She called Mari's mom's cell phone in front of me. I heard Mari's voice for the first time since I left the hospital. Nadia got straight to the point and told us she needed to meet with me to explain a few things. My ex declared she'd been waiting and wanting to talk. She was asked if her lawyer could be contacted. Mari said she didn't have one, but said she was willing to come the next afternoon to talk. No lawyer, huh? No, no lawyer, huh? Sure, come on down. Just you, me, and uh, my lawyer. Uh, it was all I could do to get through the next day without crying like a lunatic at work, and yet pretend to be getting things done. I was barely able to keep lunch down, but I left at three and headed at the firm's feeling nauseous. I arrived first intentionally. I wanted her to be forced to enter, sit on the side away from the door, and unable to try and approach me. I was scrolling through the pictures of our perfect family that never existed when she came in. She needed assistance, walking, and was still in two casts from the wreck. I didn't have to worry about her trying for a hug. I thought she might be playing it up for sympathy. But we did have a bad wreck. I finally wanted her just to sit the hell down so I could ask her to explain herself. Once we were all seated, water was offered and the meeting began. Yeah, good luck getting her to explain the whole story. There is no way she's going to come clean about everything unless literally like she is like absolutely forced to. And even then, good luck. It says here, my lawyer started by asking Mari if she uh, mind us recording the meeting. She was fine with it. As soon as we started recording, my soon-to-be ex-wife began to try and apologize. I bluntly interrupted her and asked her point blank how many men she'd cheat on me with and when did it start. There were enough confirmed hookups from the PI to know the guy I caught her with wasn't the first by a mile. She didn't know what we, were, what we knew, of course, and I guess to reduce the severity of the incident before the wreck, her plan was to only admit what she knew that we knew. Well, of course. I asked her again, rough estimate, how many men she'd slept with since our son was born. Given that specific time frame seemed to give her a minute's pause, but she kept trying to act clueless. She still thought it was all a game at that point, and I was losing my cool. She had to sit there and think and think and think. A minute's a long time when you're sitting there in pure silence, trying to figure out how much sausage has she gotten in the time since the daughter was born. Uh, Nadia put her hand on my shoulder and gently pushed me back away from the table. She looked at Mari and asked if I was a good father. She quickly gave me a glowing review, saying that she couldn't ask for a better father to raise her children. I wanted to stand up and flip the table at the way she start, start stated her children. Nadia then asked if, if her asked her if the other father was her child was going to be a good dad too. As Mari was asking what other father she was talking about, my counsel slid the paternity results from Carrie across the table. As much as I've hated what my life has become since discovering her cheating, I need to be there to see her reaction in person. She was obviously shocked to know Carrie isn't mine. And she tried to hit me with the whole, you're her father who has raised her, and I had to shut that down. The paternity tests are right there. They did two of them. And still, you're her real father. I asked her who Carrie's father is. She looked down with a hint of shame, <clears throat> and I thought she might be protecting someone. When she said she didn't know for sure who Carrie's father is, Mari saw me truly break down in tears for the first time. I just couldn't take it anymore and lost it. Mari was crying, but asked to try and explain. 
explain what? And I can understand this guy's emotional turmoil. Well, I mean, okay. I don't know what it feels like, but I can be empathetic. But uh, always best not to let him see you cry. But he's human. S says here, uh, she reminded me about the uh, postpartum depression she went through after Michael was born. I did my best to be as sympathetic as I could at the time. I can say with certainty I spent every moment I could looking after my son so she could have time to herself. There were days she was so depressed she couldn't even get out of bed. And I looked after all of us. But I loved doing it. I loved doing it for the family. I had remembered I had actually been foolish enough to thinking maybe it, it making me. Okay. I had actually been foolish enough to thinking make, making it through made our relationship stronger. Nope. She didn't blame it on Rebecca, but when she first got Mari to go on the girls' night out, I was relieved, if not grateful. They'd been best friends for years and hadn't seen much of each other during the pregnancy. Rebecca, or Becca, is the one whose house his wife was hooking up with that dude, if you all remember. An active participant in her cheating. Mari says she got really drunk the second time they were out, and she let some guy fill her up while she gave him head. She says she felt guilty about it for a while, for months. But she began to resent not get, getting to be young and free to be with whoever she chose. There you go. Right there. Resent not being young and free to be able to hook up with whoever she chose. Um, that's called marriage. You made She made the choice to get married. You want to do that? Then don't do that. Or if you're unhappy, then fine. Ask for a divorce. But don't do this to this poor guy who's a good father and good man. To you and your kids. Piece of garbage. She told us she started hooking up with guys the night she would go out with Rebecca. Until that night before a wreck, she never come home or come home later over the years. She claimed she didn't want to develop feelings for any of the guys. She claimed she always used protection and never slept with the same guy more than three times. She just wanted SCX. I was dumbfounded. Oh, well, very nice. You know, three times and that's it. On to the next one. I'm sure he felt so much better. Welcome to Sam Gamora 2.0, guys. <coughs> She's a piece of work. Well piece of something. Uh, finding out your wife is a filthy lying S-L-U-T tends to do that. It was like learning your life is a reality show you didn't ask to be in. I wanted to yell at her, but I was too busy calculating how many men she possibly cheated on me with over a period of years. Nadia asked her if she had any idea who Carrie's father might be, and she swore she always assumed she was mine. Yeah, sure. Because she doesn't know. Because there's so many dudes she can't even keep track my lawyer pointed out the obvious something had happened and suggested maybe a condom broke. When my wife confessed that she did happen, it did happen a few times with a few guys, I lost my shit. I asked her who the hell she was because I didn't know the person telling me such horrible things. Like she was telling me to pass the salt. I asked her when she started hating me and why. I asked her what I ever done to warrant being treated like she did. How could she do this to our daughter? I, I raised. She took it knowing it was all true. After what she just told me and what I expressed about how I feel about her, divorce is a given. What was a marriage? What what was a marriage had become scorched earth. The only thing left to do was to, was total up all the casualties. I lost a wife and a daughter. That's two. A wife lost a husband. That's three. A daughter lost a father and a brother and his sister became a half. Then you get into the grandparents and in-laws. Mari essentially destroyed two entire families. Her parents will not be okay with what she was doing. And I swear by all that is holy, I will, I will let them see all the evidence the P.I. finds. There you go. Let the parents see their wonderful, sweet, and innocent daughter. She admitted to, to a meeting with men from dating apps with Rebecca and using girl time as hookup time. Hear that, guys? Girl time is hookup time. What have I told you countless times about the girl night, girls nights out, girls weekends, um, paying attention to who your wife or girlfriend hangs out with? Now, does this mean every single time this is going to happen? No, but a hell of a lot in these stories. She claims she never meant to hurt me. Yeah, sure. She swore she had no idea Carrie isn't mine. I actually believed her because I had no idea either. But DNA doesn't lie. I asked why she didn't just divorce me. She came straight out and said because she didn't want to lose the security I gave her. There you go. That's why. Cake and eat it too situation. She cried. All of it was enough. All of it was said through tears. But I know my expression was just scorn. I was disgusted at the person who sat across from me. I feel used, humiliated, emasculated. I feel defeated. 
I'm pretty sure one of the reasons she came to talk without a lawyer is due to the fact that I own everything. She doesn't have much to lose outside of a small 401k. All of my assets I entered the marriage with by inheriting my grandfather's estate when I was 14 years old. The woman I call mom is not my biological mother. My mother died when I was two from a rare, fast-spreading cancer. My dad remarried the woman I call mom when I was four. I've known my entire life she wasn't my biological mother and I wasn't her biological son. I learned later she couldn't have children and raising me helped her experience that. When my biological mother's dad died, uh, what was left to her went to me as the heir. But I couldn't touch it until I was 21 years old. I studied hard and went to school, but I don't have to work. Uh, fiscally, she knows I will mop the floor with her in the divorce and she won't be getting anything close to half. Awesome. At least we know that's a good thing here going for this guy. She has a job. She isn't able to work at the moment with her injuries, but she has a job. Part of me wants to punish her, and the other part of me wants to be done with her. Mario is obviously medicated for pain. Maybe that's why she was being so blunt. But her words just cut me so deep, and my imagination made them even worse. I asked her if she felt any shame. She claimed she did. I asked her how the hell were we going to find out who Carrie's father actually is. My soon-to-be ex-wife started in with the I already know who the father is BS. Okay. I was not in the mood for some philosophical discussion about what constitutes being a father. Whomever Carrie's father actually is deserves to know, and she needs to know about his family for health reasons. The evidence the P.I. had found didn't stretch back before Carrie was born. I asked her if she could uh, find any of these men or had, he saved their, had saved their numbers. She had the audacity to say the point of losing their numbers was to never see them again. My God, how did I not see that logic? I told her she might have wanted to keep his number to let him know he had a child on the way or if she got an STD. I want my name off Carrie's birth certificate. DNA proves she is, she is her mother's child and not mine. As stated, I will support her financially on my own free will long past her turning 18. She will not want for anything. As for my son in custody, I'm truly not sure what to do. Before the paternity test, I was strongly going for a 90-10 arrangement, giving my ex-wife custody one week in a month and certain holidays. Now that Carrie is not mine, I don't feel right about pursuing custody for, for her even if I could get it. As, uh, as Michael is in fact her brother, half. I don't want to take him from her too. I don't want either of them to suffer. But I haven't seen Carrie since the test results and I can't let her see me break down because of them. Yeah, this guy, he has to be as calm as can be with the kids. Every ounce of strength he has, he's got to be calm for them. Because if he starts crying and having an emotional breakdown, which we can all understand, then they're going to have an emotional breakdown. They're already going to be breaking down. So he has to be the strong... He has to pull reserves of strength that he never, he knew, he never knew he had to be calm for the kids with a plan. And I'm here for you and I love you. That's it. Then he can go cry later. <clears throat> uh, God knows how much her therapy is going to cost me, but I will, I will have to pay it. There is no way to know if her real dad can afford it, and my own therapy will be enough to pay for some shrink's new beach house. Driving home after the meeting, a huge part of me wanted to just end it all. It seemed like the most beneficial solution for everyone, but me. Both families could go on pretending about paternity. My ex could W-H-O-R-E around openly while, sp uh, while spending my grandfather's money, and the kids wouldn't have to deal with any broken marriage or failed relationships. But by the time I got home, I said, F that. Uh, Nadia is drawing up the divorce papers and legal paperwork to have me declare it not Carrie's father. That will make things take much longer. But I do not want any legal grounds that can force me to interact, pay for, or deal with, with offspring that are not mine. The legal team is doing research for ways to find out who Carrie's father is. Many of the ancestry sites suggest potential relatives when results come back. Right now, that's our, our first plan of action. Even if the results don't come back pointing to a certain individual, they may point to a brother, cousin, or another relative. Whomever the guy is, he may not be ready to accept a child he didn't know about. I guarantee you he's not going to be ready because this is probably a Chatter Tyrone car carousel rider. Oh, no, excuse me. Uh, Chatter Tyrone, and she was riding the carousel with. Uh, it could cause some anxiety in his life but I doubt it will be nearly the tear I felt losing my daughter forever because she never existed. Everything is just so screwed up at the moment. Nothing is stable. Chaos is a daily burden at this point. I wasn't kidding, guys. This, this story was crazy. But don't worry. Our hero here will get through this and wreak havoc on those that screwed him over. 
The kids come back to the house Sunday afternoon. I never wanted to, I never wanted to not see them before, but I know many in 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 in, 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 in I can't say that. Word. I know what will happen. I can't be prepared for when she sees me and wants to hug her daddy. I'm not sure how I'll react. Hug her and cry like a baby, knowing she's not mine or ever ever been truly mine. Tell her I'm not the person she's looking for. I don't have it in me to be mean to her, but my heart is broken. Like there is nobody to take this out on, even Mari. Because nothing I could do outside of uh, offing someone would equal the betrayal she has done to me. That scale will never be balanced. She used me and spit me out. She deserves to rot in hell for her promiscuous lying ways. She deserves all that. And don't worry, she'll get something. I'm destroyed and everything I used to love is too. I will win the divorce. Nadia and company will make it the most lopsided division of assets in the history of divorce. But Mari reduced or removed the value of so much of me, it feels like she's already won. Again, to hell with her. I'm left with a son she will try and use against me and manipulate. Some people really are so horrible, they deserve to be put down like an animal. I made the stupid mistake and decision to have a child with one. I just don't know if I'm not the only stupid one here. So guys, that ends part two. And we're going to go on to part three tomorrow where things will really start picking up. But again, like I tell you, you can't make this shit up. Psalm Gomorrah 2.0. Lord knows how many dudes this woman has been with the entire time. And again, she wanted, she didn't want to feel trapped in the marriage. And, and she didn't like being not free to go hook up. And hook it up. And her best friend, Becca, was covering up the whole time for years. So why it goes to show you got to pay attention who your gal who hangs out with. Whether it's your wife, girlfriend, fiance, whatever. Does this mean they're all going to do this? No. But a hell of a lot do. you got to be careful. But uh, anyhow, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Then let me know what you think about this. And guys, be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.